world leaders have descended upon Glasgow as they attempt to come to an agreement on how to tackle climate change. Due to doctors' advice, the Queen was forced to miss the conference but Charles and William have taken on more work during the summit. Now, the monarch has praised the work of her son and grandson after sharing what they had been up to on day two of the summit. The official royal family Twitter account shared a series of images of Charles and William as they met with Commonwealth leaders and events with the Earthshot Prize winners and finalists. The account wrote, find out what the Prince of Wales and the Duke of Cambridge got up to on day two of COP2. Today's sessions included a Commonwealth leaders reception and events with the At Earth's Hot Prize winners and finalists. Addressing the summit via video call on Monday, the Queen praised her son, Prince Charles, and her grandson, Prince William, for continuing the work of her late husband, Prince Phil. She said, it is a source of great pride to me that the leading role my husband played in encouraging people to protect our fragile planet, lives on through the work of our eldest son Charles and his eldest son William. I could not be more She continued to say how she has drawn great comfort and inspiration from the enthusiasm of people of all ages. Her Majesty continued, Indeed, I have drawn great comfort and inspiration from the relentless enthusiasm of people of all ages, especially the young, in calling for everyone to play their part. In the coming days, the world has the chance to join in the shared objective of creating a safer, stabler future for our people and for the planet on which we depend. None of us underestimates the challenges ahead, but history has shown that when nations come together in common cause, there is always room for hope. Working side by side, we have the ability to solve the most insurmountable problems and to triumph over the greatest of adversities. Elsewhere in her address to world leaders, the Queen paid tribute to her late husband, Prince Philip, who died in April this year. She said, I am delighted to welcome you all to the 2TH United Nations Climate Change Conference, and it is perhaps fitting that you have come together in Glasgow, once a heartland of the Industrial Revolution, but now a place to address climate change. This is a duty I am especially happy to discharge, as the impact of the environment on human progress was a subject close to the heart of my dear late husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. I remember well that in 199, he told an academic gathering, if the world pollution situation is not critical at the moment, it is as certain as anything can be, that the situation will become increasingly intolerable within a very short time. If we fail to cope with this challenge, all the other problems will pale into insignificance. The Queen was expected to travel to COP2 to be in person at the reception, but Buckingham Palace announced last week she had to regretfully cancel her attendance after her doctors advised her to rest. Health concerns for the Queen first arose on October 20, when the palace announced Her Majesty agreed to cancel a two-day trip to Northern Ireland after doctors' advice. It later emerged the Queen had been taken to hospital for preliminary tests, the nature and results of which have not been shared. While she is deemed well enough to carry out light duties at Windsor Castle, and even some virtual audiences, on Friday evening it was announced Her Majesty's medical team advised her to rest for at least two more weeks. Last week, Buckingham Palace shared news of the Queen's absence at the event saying, following advice to rest, the Queen has been undertaking light duties at Windsor Castle. Her Majesty has regretfully decided that she will no longer travel to Glasgow to attend the evening reception of COP2 on Monday 1 November. Her Majesty is disappointed not to attend the reception but will deliver an address to the assembled delegates via a recorded video message.